All right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless y'all. I'm Jarvis Kingston, and I hope y'all staying strong and doing all right in these times that we're in. Now, today I want to discuss about spiritual counseling, spiritual therapy, and spiritual guidance. You know, nowadays we're in the era where mental health is like one of the biggest topics to talk about. Us as a generation, we're very more self-aware about conflicts and personal issues that we deal with and emotional burdens and all types of problems that we're struggling with till this day. And a lot of cases, many people tend to be too focused on what others think of them. And sometimes people tend to be too scared of going to therapy or seeking help and reaching that vulnerable point of asking for guidance. You know, some people like to cover up their issues or like to cover up their problems and mask it, you know. And at other times, a lot of people like to oppress, suppress their own emotions just for the sake of not looking weak or vulnerable in front of someone. But the thing about problems is that you can't run away from them. You have to face them. You know, every conflict you have, every issue, every burden, you have to face it and be strategic and have problem solving skills and to always have a solution for every issue that's going on, whether it's self-inflicted or out of your control. But I want to talk about spiritual therapy, you know, spiritual counseling, spiritual guidance, you know, because people approach the mental health perspective from a carnal state, you know, from a physical standpoint, but nobody approaches mental health from a spiritual standpoint. You know, no one talks about spiritual therapy. You know, what can truly be spiritual therapy? What can be spiritual guidance? What can be spiritual counseling? You know, spiritual therapy can be getting baptized, being renewed, being restored, you know, being healed from so much traumatic experiences, you know, being healed from a broken heart. That's that spiritual therapy where you could truly feel God's presence and you could feel God changing you and molding you into a brand new person and restoring you. That's the spiritual therapy of it. Spiritual guidance is where you fellowship, you have friends or family or people you go to church with or whatnot that can guide you and counsel you. That's the counseling part where you have other believers that are with you and praying for you and encouraging you and iron sharpens iron and helping you out and keeping it real with you, right? That's the guidance part where you have like a mentorship or you have like a life group events y'all go to, you know, things like that. So we all do need spiritual counseling. We do need spiritual guidance. We do need spiritual therapy because that's what's going to make us stronger. That's going to make our faith more better. That's going to make our relationship with God even better because we cannot get through this all alone. You know, we cannot just go through everything just being a lone wolf. You know, God wants us to be around great people. God wants us to be around blessed people as well. You know, God wants us to be around smarter people, stronger people, so we can all help one another. You know what I'm saying? And we all need that, okay? Nobody's too good for anything. Nobody's too good for counseling. Nobody's too good for mentorship. Nobody's too good to learn something. Nobody's too good to get schooled, okay? We don't know it all. We don't have all the answers. So we have to always be seeking wisdom, seeking guidance, seeking answers. You know, God put us on earth to dig for stuff, you know? And we can't always figure every single thing out on on our own, you know. It's really cool when God places a smart person in your life and he just enlightens you and just puts you on to so much different things and make you have a different perspective about life too, you know. So we all need that, man. All right, we all need to fellowship. We all need to find great people around us. We all need a good support system. You know, we always talk about emotional support system, which is definitely needed, but we need a spiritual support system, right? Right. On a spiritual aspect, you know, we have the most high. We have the Holy Spirit, the comforter. You know, we have angels that protect us. We have archangels that protect us, right? You know, we have people that pray for us. We have elders that pray for us. We have other people we fellowship with, right? So that's that spiritual guidance. You know, that's the the therapeutic aspect of it, you know. And the spiritual counseling is when you learn the word of God from someone or someone's teaching you and teaching you things that of Christ teaching you the spirit, spiritual things of that nature, you know. So we all need like a mentor or a teacher or someone to really encourage us and that has a lot of wisdom and good leadership, you know. Because sometimes you got to follow in order to lead. Okay, you need a, you definitely need to be in a group setting for that as well, you know. So that, that's, those things are very important in life. So I want to read a few scriptures that that talk about these things and just go from there. The book of Proverbs, chapter 27, verse 9. Oil and perfume make the heart glad, so a man's counsel is sweet to his friend. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 22. Without consultation, plans are frustrated, but with many counselors, they succeed. 
The book of Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man is he who listens to counsel. The book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 6. For by wise guidance, you will wage war. In abundance of counselors, there is victory. The book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 14. Where there is no guidance, the people fall. But in abundance of counselors, there is victory. You know, so as you can see, it's important how we all are counseling each other. We're all gathered and linking up. We're all working together. This goes back to my previous message I talked about, but I just want to talk about like spiritual counsel, spiritual guidance, you know, because we all definitely need that in this crazy world that we're living in. The book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is a living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The book of Proverbs, chapter 18, verse 13. He who gives an answer before he answer, before he hears, it is folly and shame to him. The book of First Corinthians, chapter 2, verse 9. But just as it is written, things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard and which have not entered the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 14. And concerning you, my brethren, I myself also am convinced that you yourselves are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge and able also to admonish one another. The book of James, chapter 1, verse 19. This you know, my beloved brethren, but everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. All scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the men of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 3, verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual men, but as to men of flesh, as to infants of Christ. The book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. The book of Proverbs, chapter 13, verse 10. Through insolence comes nothing but strife. But in, through insolence comes nothing but strife. But wisdom is with those who receive counsel. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 22. Without consultation, plans are frustrated, but with many counselors, they succeed. The book of Proverbs, chapter 20, verse 5. A plan in the heart of a man is like a deep water, but a man of understanding draws it out. The book of Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 18. There is one who speaks rashly like the thrust of a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. The book of Romans, chapter 15, verse 4. For whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction, so that through perseverance and through the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. The book of Galatians, chapter 6, verse 1. Brethren, even if anyone is caught in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Each one look to yourself, so that you too will not be tempted. The book of Colossians, chapter 1, verse 28. We proclaim him, admonishing every man and teaching every man with all wisdom, so that we may present every man complete in Christ. The book of Hebrews, chapter 3, verse 13. But encourage one another day after day, as long as it is still called today, so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. The book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 25. Not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more as you see the day drawn near. The book of John, chapter 14, verse 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. The book of Psalm, chapter 16, verse 7. I will bless the Lord who has counseled me. Indeed, my mind instructs me in the night. The book of Psalm, chapter 73, verse 24. With your counsel, you will guide me, and afterward, receive me to glory. The book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 14, where there is no guidance, the people fall, but in abundance of counselors, there is victory. The book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 6, for by wise guidance, you will wage war, and in abundance of counselors, there is victory. The book of Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 15, the way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man is he who listens to counsel.
So we have to be good listeners, you know. We can't always push people away and think we know it all and be isolators. We have to come together, all right? Counseling, therapy, and um, all those things are important, all right? Now, let's see. The book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 6. For a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Wonderful Counselor. Boy, Jesus is a wonderful counselor. Yes, he is. The book of Psalm, chapter 119, verse 24. Your testimonies also are my delight. They are my counselors. The book of Proverbs, chapter 11, verse 14. Where there is no guidance, the people fall, but in abundance of counselors, there is victory. The book of Proverbs, chapter 15, verse 22. Without consultation, plans are frustrated, but with many counselors, they succeed. The book of First Chronicles, chapter 27, verse 32. Also, Jonathan, David's uncle, was a counselor, a man of understanding and a scribe. And Jaleel, the son of Hachmani, tutored the king's sons. The book of Proverbs, chapter 24, verse 6. For by wise guidance, you will wage war. And in abundance of counselors, there is victory. The book of Proverbs, chapter 12, verse 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but a wise man is he who listens to counsel. So as you can see, the importance of spiritual counseling, spiritual therapy, spiritual wisdom. All those things are very important. We all need those things. We all need spiritual guidance, you know, being staying prayed up, fasting and praying. That's spiritual therapy too. crying out to God. That's spiritual therapy. Going to nature, embracing God's creation. That's spiritual therapy as well. So there's so many ways of spiritual therapy, spiritual guidance and spiritual counseling. We have to really practice those things. Regardless of the condition that we're in, if you're in a good mood, you're in a good place, then cool. You know, still want to practice that no matter what, no matter how things are good or bad. Um, we always need to be refined. We always have to be renewed. We always have to be refreshed. We always have to be restored no matter what. We can't walk around holding grudges and holding baggage and holding on to the past and holding on to um, grudges and things of that nature and unforgiveness. That's not a way to go about things. You know, therapy is about letting go, right? So you want to let go all those spiritual burdens, all those spiritual baggage. You let go of it because when you go to a therapist, you you vent to them, you pour it out to them. Right. So when you come to Christ, when you come to the father, you pour it out to God, you cry out to God. All right. You cry out to him. Right. You tell you tell the, your therapist, your counselor, every detail. Right. So you tell the Lord everything. Of course, he sees it all, but he wants you to pour it out. You know, keep your heart with due diligence because out of it springs the issues of life. You got to pour your heart out to God. You got to pour all those things out, all right? Don't hold no punches. Be raw with it, right? We serve a mighty God, so we have to be mighty as well when it comes to every aspect of our lives. We got to be a mighty prayer warrior. When we pray out to God, when we pray to God, a crowd to him, we got to keep it real, <laughs> you know, keep it real raw, you know what I'm saying? Because he sees it all, so it's no point of acting all preppy about it. You know, we just really need that spiritual counseling. We need that. You know, we do need each other, man. All right. We all need each other. Elijah needed Elisha. Elisha needed Elijah. Moses needed Joshua. Joshua needed Moses. Moses needed Aaron. Aaron needed Moses. Christ needed the disciples. The disciples needed Christ. Okay. Abraham needed uh, Sarah. Sarah needed Abraham. You see, like, we all need somebody. We all need, you know what I'm saying? So you're not alone. Okay. You might feel a little alone at the moment, but you, you know, God going to get you with the right person or the right people. Don't worry about it. All right. Just make sure you get that spiritual therapy, that spiritual guidance, that spiritual counseling. All right. I pray that I pray to God that whoever listens as much as I pray that you get baptized, you start your life for for the Lord. I pray that things open up and get better for you. I pray that you go through your spiritual therapy thoroughly. I pray that you become cleansed, spiritually cleansed. I pray that you become renewed. I pray that you become a new, stronger, better person. And I pray that God bless you in all areas of your life and that you bless others as well. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I got much love for y'all. God bless y'all. Peace.